Coming up next on 31 Eyewitness News tonight, the Atlanta shuttle crew is preparing for launch in their secret mission. There are new questions tonight about how the shuttle Challenger's crew died. It's Huntsville's newest space storm, and the public gets a free look. I'm Scott Huffman, and I'll have the details coming up. Good evening, everyone. I'm Renee Goodman. Those stories and more are coming up next. You're watching WAAY-TV Channel 31 in Huntsville, the one more people watch for news than any other station. Now, live, 31 Eyewitness News Weekend. With Renee Goodman, Mark Fox's Eye on Weather, Tim Hayes with Sports, and news from the Shoals Bureau. This is 31 Eyewitness News Weekend, the clear choice. Good evening, everyone. A new report says the crew of the shuttle Challenger may not have died in their spacecraft's explosion. Instead, when the shuttle cabin crashed into the ocean. NASA investigators, quoted by Tropic, the Miami Herald Sunday magazine, says it's possible the seven crew members survived the shuttle's destruction and were aware of their fate during the two-and-a-half-minute plunge to the ocean. The space agency's official report says they were killed instantly. The second post-Challenger shuttle flight is proceeding toward a late November launch date. The five-member crew of the classified military mission are at Cape Canaveral tonight. Today, they completed a dress rehearsal of space shuttle emergency procedures at the Kennedy Space Center. Tomorrow, the Atlantis crew will participate in a practice countdown. Sources say the mission will launch a spy satellite. And in keeping with previous military flights, there will be no TV coverage of onboard activities. Atlantis is expected to blast off its secret mission around November 28th. The U.S. Space Camp is a big reason Huntsville Space and Rocket Center is the state's number one tourist attraction. The new Space Camp Habitat may help the center stay on top. Today it was open house for the public, and Scott Huffman has Coming more. Up, Sandra Van Oka reviews this week's business news and a look ahead at tomorrow's weather. House gave prospective campers the chance to see the new space habitat. Trainees will sleep and study in the four-story building. They'll also do computer work there. Those people taking the tour today are impressed with Space Camp and the new habitat. It's just neat, and you get to learn about space and what's up there, and it's just real nice. It was neat how they had the room set up, and that you had a computer in all the different rooms and stuff. While most people probably think children would enjoy Space Camp the most, it's also big with adults. We're broken up into two groups, and each group puts on two missions, and we each take uh, turns with the various parts of the mission, and uh, we just all have to work together and uh, try to get the mission so that we don't uh, fall in the ocean. The Space Habitat houses over 400 trainees. In Huntsville, Scott Huffman, 31 Eyewitness News. Members of the Metropolitan Orchestra of Huntsville will soon get a taste of the Big Apple. The group has accepted an invitation to play at New York's Carnegie Hall on April 3rd. Some 50 members are expected to participate in the invitation-only performance. Orchestra musicians range in age from 11 to 18. And during the four-day visit, they'll serve as the state's official ambassador. Plans are already underway for special fundraisers to help the students pay for the trip. And a trip just across Huntsville on the Parkway tomorrow may be a major undertaking. Kim Albright tells us on tonight's Road Watch where the problem areas will be. Renee, motorists traveling the Parkway will want to allow quite a bit of extra time starting in the morning. The flashing red and yellow line show the problem areas. I-565 construction will force workmen to close one lane north and southbound on the parkway just south of the Clinton Street overpass. This work will likely cause lengthy delays during peak traffic times. Workers plan to begin work shortly after daylight. They say it may take up to two weeks to complete this first phase of work in this area in preparation for the I-565 interchange. You will also want to avoid Holmes Avenue between Pulaski Pike and Mason Court due to construction work. And you should be cautious on University Drive and Governor's Drive as work continues along these two major roadways. 
Heavy equipment may cause some spotty, short-lived traffic problems throughout the day. To sum it up, leave extra early, drive carefully, and be alert for workmen in these problem areas. I'm Kim Albright, and that's tonight's Road Watch. Will weather also hamper your Monday morning drive? Mark Fox has the answers when we return. 